called it a knockdown. The referee is Larry Rosadilla from Los Angeles, California. The judges, Fernando Viso from Venezuela and Eva Sheen from New York. So there are the nuts and bolts as we approach the closing seconds of round one in which one knockdown was scored officially by Sammy Serrano against Valdez. I talked about the absence, relatively speaking, of punching power. And down in the first round went Valdez. Personally, I still thought it looked more like a slip. Where within the last 20 seconds of the first round, we'll show it to you between rounds. These are American manufactured gloves. Eight ounces, that's the end of the round. And incidentally, one more time, Serrano's round. Valdez was attempting to be aggressive, which he has promised to do. And then that apparent push. Now we're live action in the second round. The bell having just rung in the background. Sammy Serrano with his back to you. The defending WBA junior lightweight champion, Valdez, on the right side of your screen, the challenge. Valdez often keeps his hands low. He can do this effectively because he is almost incredible in his measurement of distances, staying out of range. Crowd yells, they think Valdez was hitting low. Again, Larry Rosadilla of Los Angeles, California is the referee, scoring on the 10-point must system, the three knockdown rule in effect. A solid 20 by 20 ring. The canvas, despite earlier rains today, absolutely dry. It had been covered by a protective canvas. So there should be no slipping in the ring. A minute and 10 seconds into the second round. Serrano tallish for a junior lightweight. With the edge in reach. Silhouette shot. Minute and a half gone in the round. Valdez trying to get through Serrano's guard. That's Serrano to the right of your screen in the darker trunks. The emphasis upon colors because of the similarity in colors, Serrano in maroon, Valdez in crimson. And within the final minute of the round, very little action in this round. Two flicking jabs, each of which missed. Remember what I said about Valdez's judgment of distance. Serrano missing again. Serrano, a local hero, but not the macho type of guy that Escalera is. So he is. Oh, good quick right lead by Serrano. Good quick snapping right that scored. Took Valdez by surprise. We are now approaching the end of round two. Defending WBA junior lightweight champion Valdez. Born in Santo Domingo, now resident in New York City, the challenger now to the right of your screen. Valdez in the lighter trunks, Serrano in the darker trunks. Third round action. One knockdown in the fight, scored in the first round. A left, more of a push than anything. Scored by Serrano against Valdez. Serrano again scored with the right. you will so often see Serrano lead with the right and do it effectively is because he is so skilled at converting to the southpaw stance.
I told you about that in the first round. Third round action. The fight especially important in the murky blur of boxing jurisdictions, the WBA and the WBC, because Alexis Aguayo retained his WBC title in the same weight classification a couple of weeks ago in Rimini, Italy, when he devastated Escalera with a left hook in the 13th round. Right there, Valdez finally did score with a left. WBC calls it super featherweight. The WBA calls it junior lightweight. And I could give you a 20-minute dissertation, dissertation on those two rump organizations, each seeking to sustain its own authority and jurisdiction over boxing, and each contributing to the mangled mess that boxing is. But we're watching a fight here now. Point is, Arguello's moving up to the lightweight class, so this fight has a special importance. As the two are in the corner, and no damage is being done. We're within the final 30 seconds of the round. A lot of motion, no punishment, no real boxing effectiveness by either fighter. The right lead grazed Valdez then, excited the crowd. End of the round. It's no secret that quality mechanics rely on quality parts. So when you see this sign in garages and service stations, you know the mechanics who work there. K. Serrano hitting Valdez with two punches, and then Valdez wanted to go at him. But now we're into fourth round action. And Valdez was steaming between rounds. Valdez has a hostile crowd here, of course. Sammy Serrano, Puerto Rican. Understandably, the fans are all for him. Crowd yells. Rosadilla tells Valdez not to hold. Last round, this round, we're seeing a lot of arms and elbows and some shoulders, too. Sound and fury signifying nothing. Scored the first two rounds for Serrano. He scored a knockdown by the referee's dictate in the first round. The third round, I scored even. Subjective scoring, of course, nothing official about. For a minute, 15 seconds into round four. Valdez with a purposeful look on his face, wanting to get inside, wanting to damage the opponent. He's been having a difficult time doing it. Again, they clinch and hold. This fight's going to take a lot of activity by the referee if it keeps going this way. Again, the right lead by Serrano, and that's been a very effective blow for him. It invariably scores. No cuts on either fighter. A minute left in the fourth round. The crowd so far, more exciting than the fight. Again, you saw the right lead. Again, the clinch, the hold. 40 seconds left. Serrano in the darker trunks. Crowd responds. Counting down to the end of round four. It's all footwork. And the crowd seems to be loving. End of the round. Don't shave.
Dave. Huh? I'm anti friction Help. Excuse me for round five. The liveliest thing in this fight, apart from that push knockdown officially recorded in the first round, has been the crowd. And yet Valdez, directly above me, has a strange, purposeful look in his face. However, he has not been able to get to Serrano. Serrano with the better reach. WBA Junior Lightweight title at stake. Again, scoring with the right. Valdez's head. This is fifth round action for 55 seconds into the round. Serrano constantly on his toes, constantly moving. Valdez, quick motion to Serrano, come on and fight. Which he gets an appropriate chorus of booze. Valdez with the arms steadily moving, the fist trying to get into the belly. A minute and a half gone in the fifth round. Sun is now pouring down on the ring. Heat must be 90 degrees or above under the roof that overhangs the canvas. Serrano will throw a left and charge in and hold. Serrano with the right lead to the belly. Blow in an upward arc. Valdez absolutely unafraid. This is what can happen when you've got two boxers, neither a puncher, despite that recorded knockdown. Twenty seconds left in the fifth round, and we'll go to Valdez's corner at the end of the round. Valdez is not able to score any clean punches. Right there, he did. He pursues Serrano. Here's the end of the round. Crowd to the rear of your picture. The place, Hiram B. Thorne Stadium in San Juan. We're coming to you live by the satellite. Valdez keeps those hands low, as I told you, and he has to come through too often with wide roundhouse punches that, A, don't have the sting because they don't travel short and straight, and, B, take too long to get them. Sixth round action. Valdez talking to Serrano, challenging him. Stand there and fight. That's what he's saying to him. But Serrano is a hit and run fighter. Movement, quickness of hands and feet, his trademarks. Wow, amateur swing. That right lead again caught Valdez. Valdez trying to get his head out of the clinch. Rosadilla, too late in coming in. Should have been in there sooner, breaking up the fighters to try to get some real fighting into this bout. Again, the right lead. Minute and a half into the round. Round six. Only mark on either fighter is the tattoo on Serrano's left arm, right in the muscle area. We 
We are almost two minutes into the sixth round. You could count on the fingers of both hands the number of blows that have been cleanly scored in this round. You see Valdez missing. See the crowd standing in the backdrop. Two quick jabbing lefts. Suddenly in the late going, it becomes a very good round for Serrano, even though Valdez keeps jabbering and challenging. End of the round coming up. You don't need... Diablito Valdez out of his corner, ready to come out for the seventh round. And immediately Serrano circling, circling on his toes. Quick with the little jab. Against the ropes and finally Valdez gets in a couple. Into the belly and then one up to the head. Both with the right. Rosendinia breaks the fighters, cautions Valdez. Valdez dodges and goes right after Serrano. And now... Valdez, who had incidentally trouble making the weight, is trying to out-muscle and maul the other fighter, the defending WBA junior lightweight champion, Sammy Serrano, in the darker trunks. This is seventh round action. For those of you who joined us late, there was one knockdown. It looked more like a push combined with a slip, but the referee called it a knockdown registered by Serrano in the first round against Valdez. Minute 10 seconds into this, the seventh round. The left got in. Pretty shot, isn't it? I'd like to alert our local stations along the line that at the end of this round, we'll take a station break. Now this, with steady movement, as you see him there. Boxers, neither with an impressive punch. Valdez trying to flick that left in there. Started the round trying to maul his opponent, manhandle him, out muscle. Now he turns to a boxing star. Serrano swinging around, scored with a right to the back of Valdez's head. lead again by Serrano. Valdez the aggressive in this round. We'll be right back with more of the Serrano Valdez WBA World Junior Lightweight Championship after this word from our local stations. May 19th. Action has just begun in the eighth round. Again, we've got the WBA Junior Lightweight Championship at stake. We're coming to you live by the satellite from San Juan, Puerto Rico. The defending champion is Sammy Serrano. To the right of your screen, the challenger is Diablito Valdez. There's been a lot of motion in this fight, but not a lot of clean hitting. A lot of arms. Elbows. Shoulders. Right there you see Valdez in the posture he's been in much of the fight. Dancing, moving. 
But those two quick jabs by Serrano, the only scoring thus far. And Serrano has missed frequently, as he did just there. And again, it's because Valdez's skill at maintaining and measuring distance is exceptional. Well, Serrano dancing. The crowd has been the most enthusiastic feature of the fight, but they are beginning to get a little discontented now, too. Eighth round action. Valdez scored well there on the inside with a left and right combination. Valdez trying to be the aggressor in the bout. You saw Valdez motion. Come on, what was that all about? As Serrano swung him around. Now you see Valdez pursuing Serrano, trying to... Muscle. was in real trouble. First a right lead, then a left by Serrano. That right lead has been Serrano's best blow. Again the right, and again Valdez was staggered. Crowd is on its feet. Serrano wanting to put the opponent away, and Valdez now looks tired. The right lead caught him again. That right lead of Serrano is out of the south post. Not even at the southpaw stand some of the time. That's been the big blow, the dominant blow of the fight, in my opinion. 20 seconds left in the round, and suddenly it became a big round for Sammy Serrano. Valdez tired, his head lagging on Serrano's shoulder. Valdez holding as this round comes to an end. We'll stay with it and follow Valdez to his corner. They work over. Chango Diaz, Nelson Cuevas, Roberto Roman, the three men in his corner. That's the first time that he was clearly hurt. The eyes were glazed, the legs little bit elastic and it was the right lead that first got him into trouble followed by a left and then subsequently during the late stages of the round the right lead again and again now there's a look see the right lead got in there to the left jaw of Valdez Now the bell, that's Sammy Serrano and that's Julio Valdez. The ninth round, one official knockdown, scored in the first by Serrano. It was a nothing knockdown. It was more of a push, but the referee called it a knockdown. Now let's see how much movement Valdez has left in it. Again, the right lead. And because Valdez keeps his hands low, especially that left, he's peculiarly susceptible to it. Serrano to the left, Valdez to the right. Shot of the crowd in the background. Two quick left scored by Serrano. Valdez wanting to get to Serrano, but not able to. He's tried the tactic in three of the last four rounds. There he's got a combination to the stump. Might be a better tactic for him. Three of the last four rounds, he tried to out more, out muscle Serrano. Each time, Serrano seemed to come back. Find openings. That time, he missed with the right lead, Serrano did. This is ninth round action, and we are more than halfway into the round. Serrano with the reach. Using the left. 
keep the opponent at bay score at the same time now on his toes and moving circling sometimes he gives a sideways view to Valdez Valdez himself not moving as much in this round it was in the eighth round that Valdez got hurt flicking left of Serrano using the reach seconds left again the left got in there Harry Rosadilla California's the referee end of the round coming up Good old Charlie, that's me. <laughs> this is action in the 10th round that has just gotten underway. Crowd boos Valdez, who still says he wants Serrano to come in and fight. The WBA Junior Lightweight crown at stake. Sammy Serrano defending to the left of your screen in the dark trunks. Julio Diablito Valdez, now of New York City, born in Santo Domingo, is the challenger in the lighter trunks. was by far the most exciting round of the fight. That's when Serrano hurt Valdez. He did it, scoring with the right lead. To which Valdez, with his lowly hell left, is peculiarly susceptible. You see him now. Look at Valdez's hands. Look where that left hand is. See it? That's the way you can come in with the right lead over it. And Serrano has done that. Neither man is a puncher. It's entirely possible that the best puncher in the joint is right next to me. Billy Martin. Crowd accuses Valdez through its boos of hitting low. Referee Rosadilla does not agree, though he broke the fight. Next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, what should be a classic fight. I'll be in Las Vegas, Nevada to bring it to you. The rematch between Mike Rossman and Victor Galindez. WBA World Light Heavyweight Championship. The fight will be blacked out in Las Vegas. Then Sunday, our continuing international championship series. Lafayette, Louisiana, the venue. The United States against Poland. The best amateur boxing in the world. seconds left in the round. This is the 10th round. One official knockdown recorded that in the first round by Serrano. I want to emphasize <laughs> Serrano is by far the fastest handed fighter that Valdez has yet fought. By far. Valdez holding. Valdez getting the left in a couple of times for a change, but Serrano right back with that quick left. Coming up to the end of the round. Okay, the round. All right, let's get back to this fight. We've got round 11 coming up. And by my precepts in scoring this fight, Serrano would seem to be in command on points. Again, I tell you, by far the most exciting action was in the eighth round, when clearly Julio Valdez was in trouble. And it was that kind of right lead that you just saw that got him in trouble. Billy Martin, of course, must be diplomatic at this point in time. Good left by Serrano. 
Billy's deeply interested in Julio Valdez, as I explained at the top of the fight. And Valdez got in a good left. Maybe his best of the fight. Now he's trying again to out-muscle the opponent. He had him pinned into the corner. Serrano's out of the corner. Valdez always with that purposeful look. And now clearly the aggressor in this round. Suddenly coming to life. Minute 15 seconds into the 11th round. So Valdez has gotten his strength back. He appeared weary in the 8th round. Valdez to the right of your screen, the bright trunks, and now, right there with his back toward you, Serrano, the defending WBA junior lightweight champion in the darker trunks. Serrano with an uppercut. Didn't, wasn't nearly as effective as the crowd thought. Item one, item two, Valdez counterpunched effectively. A minute left. This is the 11th round. There is a little mouse under Serrano's left eye. No blood or anything, just a little mouse. There in the end fighting, Valdez attempting to come up with the left. Rosadilla cautioning Serrano the break. Valdez holding Serrano with the left hand and trying to punch with the right. You can see that Valdez in this round has become the aggressor. But this time I mean the effective aggressor. He's tried to be the aggressor much of the fight, but not effective. So, we approach the end of the 11th round. in the background yelling in Puerto Rican Spanish dirty dirty to Julio Valdez there was an outbreak between the two men after the bell rang which you just saw for the last round now the live action Julio Valdez with the crowd chanting at him coming straight at Sammy Serrano took a point away from Valdez Larry Rosadilla just took a point away from Valdez in the scoring Valdez is saying, what did I do? Well, as you saw that wild action when we came back, which occurred after the last round that ended, you saw what both of the fighters did. But in the 11th round, Valdez did become the aggressor and did start to maul, but this time with some effectiveness. And so as he came right back to that tactic at the start of this round, Rosadilla, the referee, stepped in quickly and took a point away from him. Valdez in the 12th round with a lot of making up to do if indeed there is still time to do it that point will cost him dearly in the scoring of this round member scoring is on a 10 point must system Serrano knows what it is to go the distance. Look at Valdez pursuing Serrano. Tries to stay out of range. But Valdez, he's never gone past 10 rounds. And he had some trouble making the weight. First weigh in, and he was 131 pounds. He had to work it off. This is 12th round action. Rosadilla is cautioning Valdez again. Valdez is looking at Rosadilla with disgust. Now there's a cut. At the corner of Serrano's left eye, there is a cut. No real flow of blood, but there is evidence of blood. <laughs> Valdez using everything he's got. The arms, the elbows as he's cautioned again by the referee.
referee. And right there, Serrano came in with the right lead. But I'll tell you, Valdez's tactics are producing results, except for being penalized in the point scoring, because I didn't see the right that would have caused that cut Serrano's left eye. It must have come from a butt. We're going to stay and follow Serrano to his corner from Valdez in the last round. Two points have been taken away. I am now advised. Official. Two points. Can't win the fight that way. 13th round action. The last two rounds, Serrano has noticeably lost the foot movement that he had in the earlier rounds. So in that sense, Valdez was effective. In the scoring sense, disaster. Two points taken away. Minute 50 to go in the 13th round. See those wide swings of Valdez? Roundhouse stuff. See Valdez use his head right there in under Serrano's chin. That's the way you can open a cut. A lot of holding, a lot of mauling. Fifty seconds and counting down left in the 13th round. More holding. to the end of the 13th round. The end of the round at hand. And he's now to the left of your screen in the dark trunks. To the right, the challenger, Julio Diablito Valdez. in the last three rounds resorting to brawling mauling tactics that have cost him two points in the score taken from him by Larry Rosadilla the referee now Serrano returns to the sharp boxing skills that brought him domination of the fight up until the 11th round off balance he took a left from Valdez but he has been scoring cleanly with his own left. Rosadilla trying to break them up, finding it not easy to do so. Valdez holding on. This is the 14th round. Sitting next to me is Billy Martin. I respect Billy. He said Woody Hayes is a great man in his opinion. I respectfully disagree. I just want that on the record. Valdez is claiming that he was hit low. The crowd boos him. Rosadilla 
does not subscribe to the claim. But for two presumably sharp boxers, this has not been a classy boxing exhibition, and you viewers have to be able to see that. Shot against the backdrop of Ethan Stadium and the crowd. The fighters, in effect, silhou silhouetted. shining brilliantly now it had rained heavily until three o'clock San Juan time time today and we're counting down now to the end of the 14th round that right lead no question that was Serrano's big blow through the first 10 rounds coming back after a word about the upcoming wide world of sports. We think we that you will be Puerto Rico. This is what happened again as we were leaving. Serrano throwing a blow at Valdez and then the crowd said take a point away from him. They did take a point away from Serrano. I am now advised. So Valdez has had two points taken away. Serrano has had one point taken away during the course of the fight in the score. As I said, not a very classy exhibition from two presumed swift and sharp boxers. Well, I must say Valdez's style really negates classy boxing. The hands kept so low, the swing so roundhouse. Right above us now. Trying to put Serrano into the ropes. Mauling him. Trying to out-muscle him. Matter of fact, going back through the 14 rounds that have already taken place, some of the best action was after the bell had run between rounds on at least four occasions. in this ring just a month or so ago that we saw Wilfredo Benitez fight so classily, brilliantly with his counter punching to wrest the WBC welterweight crown away from Carlos Palomino himself a distinguished fighter this is a far cry from that now in the last round Serrano returns to the foot movement that he showed round in and round out during the first eight to ten rounds. Most impressive round of the fight was the eighth, though there was an official knockdown scored by Serrano in the first. Cut in the left corner of the left eye of Serrano. Never amounted to anything. Well handled by the corner. There wasn't enough clean, effective punching by Valdez to capitalize on the cut. Valdez puts that head in to Serrano's shoulder. His tactic unchanging. Now the arm, do Serrano's arm, holding with the right, trying to punch with the left. Coming to the end. Both fighters swinging wildly. The end of the fight.
There's the action we talked about that time. That time Valdez not only missed Serrano, he even missed the referee. They're at it again. After the fight was over. No, they don't like each other. Even when they fight after the bell, they don't fight well. Point of truth, it's been a lousy fight. Proud is now being contained by the police who pour into the ring to protect the fighters and keep them from one another and to keep the crowd out. We'll be back with the decision in a moment. Live at ringside, San Juan, Puerto Rico. The crowd trying to get at Valdez over in the left-hand corner. The police around him protecting him. The whole thing. Not a happy advertisement for boxing. Let's take a look, if we can, at what happened after the fight had ended. Here it is. Rod, Rodzilla, the referee, who had a very tough fight to referee here today, trying to break them up. That's when Valdez missed both Serrano and the referee. The fighters were presumably bustled to their corner, but no. As Serrano started a wave to the crowd, Valdez came at him, and the two started fighting again. Valdez with the same mauling, brawling tactic that he had been employing over the last four or five rounds of the fight. Now we're ready okay, for the okay. decision. The ring, as you can see, crowded with police. Our compliments to them for doing an effective job. The crowd supporting Serrano and, in its mind, outraged by the behavior of Valdez. Señoras y señores, ya tenemos la decisión de los jueces. 